Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, My Kind of Art, and for today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to use erasers, stumps, and brushes. We're going to learn how to use some tips and tricks when it comes to erasing and blending and rendering pencil. And throughout my entire channel, one of the main things that I like to do is draw realistically with pencil. So I've drawn celebrities, video game characters, superheroes, and everything pop culture related. And before we get started, if you're new to my channel, consider hitting the like button, ringing the bell, and leaving a comment. Let's get to it. And just as a quick reminder, I love teaching through pop culture. And don't forget that I do have a Skillshare class that's already published and it's ready to be viewed. Just go to Skillshare.com and I have all the links in the descriptions below. And this is just a small snippet of things that I teach through pop culture. And this is just one of the lessons that I like to do using erasers, brushes, and stumps. So go ahead and check that out. And if you've never tried Skillshare before, you will get one month free with the link that I have in the description below. Thank you so much. We're going to learn to use our blending stumps, pencil erasers, our blending brushes, and the most important eraser of all, the kneaded eraser. I'm going to focus on this Yoda that I drew at the bottom. I'm going to intensify the graphite and the darkness by using a 5B pencil. And this way we can clearly see how to use our blending techniques. Choose a practice sketch you did earlier and continue to darken it in the way that you see fit. This practice step can make us get a bit more comfortable before we begin our bigger drawing. This is a perfect way to get a feel for how our erasers work and how our blending brushes work as well. So let's begin by using some of our blending stumps. These paper pencil blenders are super, super useful for areas that you'll see right here. We're going to use a back and forth motion in a curved way. Because remember, we're following the form. So use these strokes and you can see that it's pushing and pulling and grabbing graphite and moving it onto the paper where we didn't cover it before. Look at how smooth everything looks. So just go into the dark areas and push it back and forth and into the areas that you need to cover. And if you draw from an angle, you can cover more or cover less. And the more pencil you lay down, the more graphite you lay down, the more layers that you create and the more graphite you have to work with. It's really easy to do, and this is a perfect place to practice and get comfortable with it. Here's a perfect demonstration by using the left side of the undrawn face. We're going to push all the way to the left. And this smaller blending brush can go into the tight areas, like the wrinkles, the mouth, and under different folds. And this one you can be super, super precise different sizes for different areas. Keep that in mind. We have so many options at our disposal. And remember, when we want to create realism, 3D dimension, and likeness, this is going to help. Now, let's move on to our blending brushes. And remember, these soft bristle brushes can be any kind of acrylic brushes or oil paint brushes, as long as they're soft and have some toughness to it. And the reason we use these brushes is to create an overall soft airbrush look. And remember, it's grabbing the graphite that you laid on with your pencil and it's pushing and pulling and softening and covering up all the white areas that you would like. Because in the end, remember, we're trying to create a difference in value and tone. And when we look at our pencil scale, that's what we're trying to create. You want to create the form of the face and the head and make things look rounded. We want to create a striking contrast between light and dark. And obviously different sizes work to cover more or less. So you can continue to practice by laying down more pencil like I'm doing right here. So that we're able to push more and more graphite in the areas that we would like. 
I decided to combine this exercise with blending and erasing because they go hand in hand. It's easier to just get in there and learn both simultaneously. Now, let's move on to our kneaded eraser. Make sure you're still drawing fairly light. Adjust accordingly to your reference photo. And this is where the eraser comes in. When drawing portraits and creating realism, the kneaded eraser is a must, must have item. So what I'm doing right here is manipulating it like clay and making it into a fine point. And what it does is you can go into corners, into the edges, and it lifts graphite easily. You can go ahead and dab it and tap if you just need to remove some or just use it like a regular eraser. This is so versatile that you must use this for all of your drawings and any future products that you create. And look how easily it removes graphite. And one of the reasons that I love this eraser is that it doesn't leave any residue, any marks, and any little debris. And this one, the more you tap, the more you rub back and forth, you can create highlights and middle tones as well. And whenever you feel like it's dirty and it's cleaned up a little too much pencil, you can clean it by just squishing it, kneading it, stretching and pulling it, and folding it into each other, just like dough. And there it's clean and you can start again. Now when you want to erase with pinpoint accuracy, a pencil eraser is a must. There are several varieties. These pencil erasers can be sharpened just like a pencil. They are very versatile to get into areas like the eyes, create thin, thin highlights, and sharpen up those edges where the normal erasers will not fit in. Now out of all of them, I found that this Tombow eraser that's refillable is the best that I've ever used. It doesn't leave as much residue as the one before. The more pressure you apply, the more it erases. And one of the other useful tricks and techniques is revealing the paper underneath to create thin, thin hairlines. What I mean is, if you press really, really hard and in really quick motions, you can create these white highlights next to the hair and create a variety from light to dark for Yoda's hair. The perfect one to practice with is this squared one. By going from the side and using these sharper edges, I'm creating hair and it looks like white hair. This is one technique we'll be doing towards the end. So what did you think of this lesson and all these tips and tricks? Let me know down in the comment section below if you guys have ever used these techniques. Thank you guys so much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.